Welcome back everyone. Here's another caricature of me. This one, as you can see, was made in Canada. It was the title page for a calculus summative assessment at SUMASS for short, pardon my language, about the motion of an insect along a number line based on a quartic formula. So this student went to great artistic length to draw this title page way back in 2006. Good for her. All right, in part four, I ended up with this improper fraction, 87 over 84, which I did simplify to 1 and 3 over 84, but I neglected to reduce this fraction, so I should have had 1 and 1 over 28, as a viewer pointed out, so I apologize for that mistake. Now back to rational expressions. Let's look at these three and see if we can simplify them. Remember, you cannot cancel things that are added, so these x's don't cancel, for example, and become 1's. But you can also see that 1 plus x is the same as x plus 1. The order doesn't matter, so the numerator and the denominator are actually the same, so that just reduces to 1, as long as x is not equal to negative 1. What about this one? x plus 1 over 1 minus x. Can we manipulate that so we can simplify it? Well, it turns out we can't. This one does not simplify. So be aware of that. Here x can't be positive 1. Now what about this one? x minus 1 over 1 minus x. Might look like it's similar to this one, but we can actually simplify this if we factor out a negative 1 from the denominator, leaving me with negative 1 plus x. Now negative 1 plus x is the same as x minus 1. So these cancel and you just get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Okay, how about this one? These are called simple trinomials because those are both 1's. In order to factor those, we, would, we could end up with two brackets of two binomials, provided that the numbers work out. In order to see what they could be, let's consider this product here x plus 3 times x minus 5. If I multiply that out, we normally multiply the x's first. That gives us x squared. Those are the first terms in each bracket. Then we multiply the outer or outside terms. That's O for outside. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Then the inside 2. i for inside, that's 3x. And finally, the last two. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. The order doesn't matter, but in English we talk about FOIL to remind us of the four things we have to multiply. Now we can simplify this one more step by combining those two like terms. That gives me negative 2x. So if I want to go backwards, I've got to find these two numbers. They have to multiply to this, and they have to add up to that. So if I use the same logic over here, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add up to 5 for the numerator. And those numbers, if you think about it for a moment, would be 7 and negative 2. There's only one possibility, or none if it doesn't factor. So I'm going to get x plus 7 times x minus 2, and for the denominator, the two numbers must multiply to 8, and add up to negative 6, so if you take a moment to think about it, you should come up with negative 4 and negative 2, so I get x minus 4 and x minus 2. And now you can see that these factors cancel. So the final answer is x plus 7 over x minus 4. If, you, if you're asked for the restrictions, again, don't look at the question. Don't look at the final answer. Look at the factor form. And you can see x cannot be 4 and x cannot be 2. OK, next time we'll look at some more rational functions, expressions, I should say, that are um, special cases. See you next time.